joining us now, the man who started Got You For Life, Gus Wallen. Gus, great to see a young leader like Jack joining you in the campaign, uh, Got You For Life. Congratulations again, mate. Thanks a lot, and thanks for having me, guys. It's lovely to be on. Yeah, Jake, as far as I'm concerned, is just one of those really sort of manly men that a lot of blokes can look up to. But he also has that side of him that allows him to be vulnerable and open and honest and, and let people know that he hasn't got all the answers to everything. So that is the perfect combination of what we're trying to get. We're trying to get blokes still to be manly, still to be resilient, but also give themselves a break and understand that life is tough. And it's no problem in the world mm. for you to be able to put your hand up and say, I'm not coping. Can someone help me, please? Gus, we are having this conversation more and more and thank you for allowing us to do that. You give us a conduit for that and that's really wonderful, the thing that the work that you're doing. Thank you. But we speak and we you know we're we're changing beliefs and behaviours, yet still suicide is still the leading, leading cause of death in young men. Yeah. And we would assume that that's the generation that are opening up more. Mm. So are we, are we? Is that a myth that they are, or is no. that something that we're not doing right? I think the awareness is definitely there, Joe. No doubt about it. But like most things, we can talk about it till the cows come home. Mm. It's action that has to start happening. So people now would understand that it's okay to chat, but we don't quite know how to mm. start that conversation. And if you do start it, and someone you're talking to doesn't get it, then you can be knocked for six. You can be knocked Holy. back years back to go, I'm never going to go and do that again. So it's treating the whole community of not coming out but also listening to it as well. Well, anyone who thinks taking their life is the only option is absolutely devastating. Yeah. But what do you think the main reasons are that they're getting to that point? Oh, there's so many different things and for, for young people, I've got three teenagers, I've got a 19-year-old boy. He always thought that if you don't have the answers, then his life's going to be rubbish. The day that I actually turned around and say to him, because I'm it up for a lot of the time. You know, if you've got little kids, you go, yeah, we'll just make that up mm. and they don't know any difference, so we'll get through it. Mm. The day where he was 15 and I actually was honest enough and vulnerable enough to say, Jack, I actually don't know the answer to that. Let's work it out together. Mm. That just gave wow. him this huge relief to go, I thought it was once you got to a certain age, blokes just knew everything. Mm. And I go, no, mate, we're making it up most of the time. We've got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, wow. so do you think that, that then our boys are being raised differently now than, say, a generation ago? Rach, I certainly hope so, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think there's a lot of blokes out there my age, sort of 50 to 60, 65, where the old ways of doing things are just so entrenched mm. that you don't actually... We haven't got through to those guys yet, so that's mm. why it's so important. We put on a, on a, on a couple of nights uh, last month, 250-odd blokes turned up. No tickets sold. Turn up if you want to. It was a miserable night and we had the place full. Blokes were standing. 70 blokes were standing because there was no seats. They're desperate for the information, mm. but if you don't have one of those nights on in your community or in your local area, where are you going to get the information from? You're just simply not going to get it. Hey, Gus, it's been a great passion of yours. Got you for a lot. Tell us a bit about it. It's about having a, a friend for life. Uh, what does it mean? Yeah, friend is the right word, Dar. So most blokes in Australia have a whole heap of mates or at least blokes that they play sport with or they knock around with. Some of those relationships may not be that strong, but at least you've got a bit of a group, a bit of a crew. What I'm saying, what I'd love people to do is just to take one of those guys or find one person in your life where you can have a warts and all conversation with. Have a conversation where nothing is barred. Mm. You can be open, you can be honest, you can be vulnerable. If you just have one person you can talk to, that is better than what most blokes are bumbling around with at the moment. Mm. Most of us got a whole heap of mates but no real friends. Mm. And you need to learn to be a really good friend so you can help your mates come through. And then hopefully line. that spreads. Yeah. You talk That's about it. utilising our emotional muscle. Yeah. So is this mental health something that can be learned or is it something that we should be working on each and every day that will therefore grow? and I, stronger. Yeah, I think it's both of those things. And emotional muscle is the best word because most blokes know or understand you're going to a gym, you go and do your session, eventually your arms will look like you guys or <laughs> <laughs> you girls. Yeah. Or like, I feel like I'm the only one that Thanks, hasn't Gus. been to the gym in the last <laughs> 10 years. But the, the simple point is, if you work on stuff in the gym, that's sort of easy for blokes to get and understand. Yeah. And you do that, you'll end up with that result. With the mind stuff, with the emotional muscle, it's so much more difficult. And you do feel like, oh, I don't quite know what to do here. There's yeah. no membership. There's no real program. So we are building those programs now. Wow. And those programs now, I, I believe, are really simple. Simple as going through your program at a gym. The thing is, it's not normal for us to do it, so we need to have the opportunity to build that in every community in Australia. It should be in every school in Australia. Mm, Mass geography, mental health. Mm. That should, just should be there.
Beautifully yeah. said, uh, Gus. We've only just scratched the surface. Can you stick around? I'd love to. Always Thank good you. to have Gus uh, Wallen. Got you for life. More with Gus right after the break on the House of Wellness. Welcome back to the House of Wellness with Gus Wallen. Gus, when you were on the show last time, we played a clip from the Man Up, Speak Up campaign, which for the first time aired on commercial television. We had an incredible response, such a powerful uh, little segment that we did. So this time we've got another one to make its debut on national TV. Let's take a look. So on this farm, if we used to make hay in the old days, we would probably have four or six blacks here. And we'd have morning tea, we'd have lunch, so we'd be yakking and talking, we could talk crap. But if somebody was upset about something, somebody would pick up on it and, and they'd talk about it. Now, I could do the whole hay myself with machinery and stuff, so I'm on me Pat Malone. Right. So if something was annoying the hell out of me, I could be sitting in that tractor just stewing all day. People get horrified why the suicide rate is higher in rural men. Well, when the drought was on, we had to shoot sheep. If I had an old working dog, and there was quite a few, and that, and they couldn't do their jobs, whatever else, we'd put them down. Now, it's not a short straw between putting yourself down when you think you ain't worth a cracker. Yeah, what a powerful bit of imagery that is, Gus, and a bit of an indication of what's happening in the rural communities around Australia. How many guys like that have you met along your journey? Oh, I've been so fortunate. I mean, China, John Harper there, one of the absolute classics blokes who, you know, he's going through so much stuff himself, and because he's got no funding and no money, he will actually take his swag in the back of his car and he'll sleep on the side of the road because he needs to get to a farmer that has reached out to him mm -hmm. and he doesn't even know who the bloke is. So when we started Gotcha for Life, it's like, well, mate, I'm going to give you a card mm. so you can buy petrol and go to a hotel and stay the night. You're 70 years old and you are saving blokes' lives every day. There's blokes like that in the community everywhere. The thing is, how can we get to all the communities with mm. blokes like Harps? And how can Harps then teach a whole lot of other blokes to go into communities too? Because the, the suicide rate is twice as bad in rural than, than in the city. What about the younger guys, though, in particular? Is it a lack of purpose or perhaps boredom? What is it for those guys? There's a whole lot of things. Um, bullying doesn't stop at the schoolyard anymore with social media. I mean, I was called chubby all my life and, and words harsher than that. But at three o'clock... Deep breath, got on the bus, got out of there, I was in my street, I was back with blokes that I knock around with playing different sports, my mum, my dad, my brothers and stuff. Now, I've got three teenage kids, that phone does not start mm. beeping. They've got five or six different apps on the go and if they don't, if they don't answer that question, then they're not in that group anymore, so that becomes a problem the next day at school. Alcohol drugs, so much easier to get now, so much cheaper to get. Yeah. So kids are looking for a way to get out of what they think is a boring life. And unfortunately, we're not doing a good job as Aussies to try to fix that. And we're getting this problem now where the number one way to lose your life is 15 to 44 year old, is to take your own life. How can that happen in this country? Yeah, yeah it's just absolutely devastating. Oh, it's heartbreaking. And there are so many people like yourself and Harps who are doing great things. And another fantastic program that I've learned about is Head Above Water. Tell yeah. us about that. Well, this was wonderful. So we have nights where we have nights for the blokes. So they can turn up at a surf lifesaving club in New South Wales. We'll put the night on for free. We come in the community and blokes just turn up. Now, that's incredible. We had 256 blokes turn up on this night. Now, uh, Wardy, who's the guy that runs um, Head Above Water, he turned up, had his own dramas, his own demons. We chatted that night. He was at the end of the room. And he said, you know what? I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. And I go, this is how you can fight. We went through a few things. He went to a program for three weeks, came out. His wife adores him. His kids adore him. And he goes, I'm a swimmer. I haven't swum for a year. Imagine, Rach, all the stuff that makes you feel good and happy. Mm. All of a sudden, you just don't do it because you forget mm. what makes you happy mm. because you are battling every day just to get through it. You need to be able to open up and talk about that. Absolutely. Mm. But he didn't know. He was just like, I have to do what everyone tells me to do. And he was this robot. All of a sudden, he went, I'm going swimming again. Started swimming. All the stuff that happens in the body made him feel mm. alive. And he went, I'm going to do a 24-hour swim. I'm going to invite everyone along. Every mate I know is going to sponsor a lane. So here we go. So we so swam inspiring. for 24 hours. 
The greatest thing about that night, me and my mates, we did the 3.30 till 4am. No one wanted to do that shit. <laughs> so I put my eyes and I can't complain, I've got to get in there. We turned up, there was music going, there was a barbecue, everyone was pumped. The light was on. You know how when workmen, um, you know, working in the middle of the night, they put those huge crazy flood lights. Like, it looks, it's, like, yes. it's like daylight. Yeah. So we just jumped in and we had the best fun. And some of us were walking, some of us mucking around. The weather was horrendous. We jumped in one lane, we got put into another lane. It was the worst night. We had the best fun. And I got off and we're all telling ourselves, Dan, we're wearing Gotcha for Life Speedos. And we're, which, Hello. believe me, Rach, you don't want to see. <laughs> So, so, there, so there we were, and I said, imagine, boys, if we turned the light off. Imagine everyone left and just you were here in this pool. Think about that for a moment. That is what blokes are going through with mm. mental illness. Mm. As soon as you put some light onto it, as soon as you add some other people to it, all of a sudden a bit of music, a barbecue and a few like-minded people, it was fun. Mm. And that's what we have to tell young boys and also men in this country. Put a light on the fact that you're feeling average most people will come and rally for you, whether it's professional, whether it's your mates or your family. That was a perfect sort of synergy, if you like, of what it's all about. You spoke yeah. earlier, Gus, about kids and how difficult it is with this overload of exposure to, you know, communication, mm. social yeah. media. As a mum, I'm raising a two-year-old boy. What yeah. advice would you give to mums raising those young kids and how to guide them through the ability to be able to express themselves freely and open up about their problems? Yeah, you've got a few years to go, so two is <laughs> such an awesome age. They will know at some stage that you're a celebrity, you're well-known. If mum is setting the example, no, I'm not putting this on Insta, no, I'm not... This is time for my mm. husband, you and the kids. Mm. That is the absolute key. It's got to come from mum and dad. We've got a basket now at home, three teenagers, Phones go in the basket as soon as you get home. How long do you reckon that took to, for that oh, rule to weeks. come into place? <laughs> and the, I, am, I, I am a lover, not a fighter. I'm going, oh, give them the bloody phones and my wife's English. She's an English person who's an English teacher. She's ruthless. Right? Those phones go in that basket no matter what. But you've got to stick to it. I need to easiest... borrow your wife in my yeah. house, Gus, I promise I'm you. I'm sure she'd like to borrow you, mate. <laughs> hey. That's another segment for another time, Gus, on the House of Wellness. I tell you what, as always, we could dedicate the whole show and a whole month to you. Your messages, they're fantastic. So if you are experiencing mental health uh, challenges, please go to the Mental Health Access Line's 24-7 service. Beyond Blue is a fantastic uh, service as well. Lifeline Australia, always there to help. Or as Gus says, reach out to a friend, a sporting or a community group or family member for support. It's uh, incredible uh, access that we need to get. Let's get this stat of six men a day down to zero, Gus. It's a campaign that you need great credit for. Thank you very much. And thanks for shows like this for allowing me to have a chat. It means a lot. Thanks. Oh, we love it, thanks, Gus. Gus. Thanks for joining us. More to come on the House of Wellness right after this.